Hello, my name is Gustavius Payne. I'm a Welsh painter. Um, I paint predominantly in oils, but I do use other materials. Um, I've exhibited since 1996 when I finished my degree. Um, I exhibit predominantly in Wales. I've also exhibited in England um, and wider field in Europe um, and in America as well, once or twice. Um, and so let's answer some questions. So my background is working class. I'd grown up in a very working class area, Merthyr Tydfil in South Wales, originally um, originally dominated by steel and iron, or the other way around, iron came first. Uh, coal then, as you'd expect, in South Wales. Um, and then, you know, big factories. So it's very working class kind of background. Um, so there was never really any expectation for me to do anything more than that you know a kind of working class kind of job you know manual work uh, maybe work in an office if you're a bit brighter that was the kind of expectation um, my family have always been very supportive when I decided to um, jack in a job that I was working in a factory for a little while um, they were very supportive when I was quite young at that time so I left school at 16 I wasn't at all interested in education um, I think it was the, the whole system thing, really, and the, the kind of conditioning that I kind of felt that I was going through that I didn't want to be part of. Um, and so I kind of rejected that. Uh, did a job. I was also in a band at that time as well. I used to, I used to be a singer in a punk band. Um, and so I think I saw that as kind of my artistic thing that I wanted to do, really. Um at that time, I was still obviously very interested in, in visual arts and in drawing and painting and that kind of thing. But I couldn't see how it could become a profession or how we could kind of pay the bills, really. And so it was never a realistic thing in my mind. Um, anyway, my family were very supportive. Um, I ended up doing um, a foundation course um, in, in general art and design. And then that kind of narrows down into fine art. And then I did my degree and then I've kind of never looked back, really. Um, so did your upbringing prompt a specific reference point to within your work? Is your work informed by certain concepts and themes in your childhood, background, socioeconomic? Um, yes, I don't think of it as my, back, as my background as uh, um, influencing my work, but definitely I think since my children got born... I think before my children got born, my work was much more personal and it was about my journey. Um, but then after my children got born, I think I was much more interested in uh, the world, um, world dynamics, political dynamics, and how th you know what the future could be for them. So I've become much more interested in um, green issues, um, human rights, and um, those kind of things, really, um, kind of left-wing politics, really. That I mean, I don't think it comes out I don't want it to come out too strongly as a kind of overt um, political... I don't want it to become dogmatic. Um, I want my work to instigate meaning and I want it to make people think rather than me saying, this is what you should think, you know, this is me saying X, Y and Z. Um, but I present things that I hope people can reflect on and hopefully I present things truthfully. I think that's what it needs to be for me. Um and obviously, you know, I wouldn't believe what I believe if I didn't truly believe it, if that makes sense. Um, and yeah, and so that working class background, that working class ethic union, you know, the value of unions and um, workers working to, you know, working together for a common good is really important to my work and really important to the influences of my work. Um, but I don't see it as my, I don't see it as my childhood. I don't see it as, I see it very much as here and now. Um, but it's obviously influenced my, my, my childhood. My, my, my grandfather was a very strong union man. Um, uh, I think my father's interested in it, maybe, you know, but he's, he's not quite the, the, as, as, as committed to it as my, as my grandfather. Uh, my father's retired now anyway, but anyway, let's move on to the next. Okay, so who are my biggest influences? Um, I find this question a little um, difficult sometimes. I mean, if, if I'm thinking about uh, my influences as I develop my own kind of style of work, if, if you were, um, 
I was very influenced by, I think, or very interested in, um, and I think influenced by as well as fair, um, German expressionists, Max Beckmann in particular, um, Otto Dix, people like that. Um, I was also interested in the Glasgow group, the 1980s Glasgow group in particular, um, Stephen Campbell. Um, so I did the, and there are a number of different artists I'm, I'm, I, you know, that I admire. Um, and I think I probably am influenced by them to some extent. But, but I think when I think of influence and what kind of motivates me to do my work, um, I think I'm more motivated by the world around me and kind of, you know, the way I might see the light reflecting on something or, you know, the way something looks visually. Um, and then some of the themes, some of the things that get me thinking, that, you know, I, I, as I'd mentioned before, really, um, you know, green issues and politics and things like that. So extraordinary people, I suppose, uh, kind of really influence me now if I'm thinking about what kind of pushes me and what kind of drives me. Um but yeah, if I'm talking about who influenced the way I look, the way my work looks, then yeah, I suppose you'd go back to some of those early artists um, that I started looking at, you know, Stanley Spencer as well, and people like that, that I kind of really admire what, you know, the kind of work they do. But to some extent as well, it was a, bit kind, a little bit kind of knowing which came first, because I think I found myself doing work similar to, to this anyway. Before I'd seen a lot of those artists, you know, they were kind of new to me. As I said, I come from a working class background, you know, looking at high art wasn't the kind of thing that we really did as such. Um, growing up, you know, I'd be walking, looking around the local um, museum and I can remember seeing, you know, the, these great paintings that, that I would be influenced by maybe or kind of think, wow. Um, but yeah, which came first, you know, was it the kind of work that I was doing and then, I saw other artists that were doing other things and then they kind of, you know, we had, you know, we had another, you know, it made me do things slightly different maybe and kind of think, oh, they did it that way or oh, they did it a little bit different. I wonder if they get that effect, that kind of thing, you know. So I suppose, yeah, if I'm talking about visually, I'd say those German expressionists, Glasgow boys uh, I and mean, a few others. Um, if I'm talking about today, I think we should all be influenced by the world around us, really. We should all be influenced by all sorts of things. Um, and yeah, I do still see art, you know, art and artists um, that will influence me. Um, yeah, it's a tricky one, isn't it? It's like, you know, I'm picking your own psyche. Anyway, hope that makes sense. Let's uh, get on to the next one. Okay, so what am I focusing on right now? Um, well, my work is a continuation, so it doesn't really stop. Um, each work kind of influences the next so that's not a kind of um, a straight line. So there's like, you know, there's a few different ideas and things that I'm playing with at one time um, and they occupy my mind. And so they kind of, what does this mean? And trying to tease meaning out really. And that's what my work's about really. It's about trying to tease meaning out. It's about me going on some kind of, um, it's about a, a journey of discovery for me really. And, you know, I've produced work in the past and then come back to it like five or six years later and thought, wow, that's, that's kind of, I just realised where I was at that time and how relevant this is now. So I try to be as honest as I can. Um, the part of it is intuitive. Um, I try to go beyond that intuition, though I do try to understand and try to tease things out. I, I think it's dangerous relying on it, intuition because I think it can be flawed, um, but it's there. You know, I think we do get these kind of intuitive kind of senses of, you know, this there's something about this image, this kind of way the light is, the way the shadows are, that's important to me. Um, and I want to I wanna find out what it's about, really. Um, and so, yeah, so, uh, you know, the, what I'm working on now is what I'm always working on. There's no kind of set um, body of work. I've done a series of work at the moment, Um with roses and bread, I'm interested in that that, that socialist um, uh, phrase of uh, we want roses, we want bread and roses too. So the idea of the bread being the, the, the basics of, to survive on and the roses actually being that little bit more, you know, art, culture, you know, we, and we should, you know. Um, now, yeah, I don't want to get into too much of the pol politics of it really, but... Um, but yeah, that's what I think, you know. And so I've been playing around with some of that imagery and that's what I've been playing around with more recently. And I'm also looking at, you know, um, ecological things. So I'm interested in, 
you know, um, wind turbines and, you know, you know, the future and green ecology and things like that. But I've been doing that, you know, I've been on this trajectory since, you know, since I can remember, I've always been too interested in this kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, I'm, what I'm working on at the moment is kind of more the same, but I suppose roses and bread are kind of one of the things I've been focusing on at the moment. What is the biggest challenge of being an artist? I mean, I think most artists of pretty much any discipline would probably say it's making a living from it. It's uh, paying the bills, it's being able to do the work that you love uh, without compromise. And that's easily the biggest challenge. Um, I get over it by, you know, I, I, I work in the arts as well. I've been an arts development officer. Um, I work in a cultural centre at the moment, uh, Welsh Language Centre, um, developing that. Um, and yeah, I, you know, I'm not going to waffle on too much about that, but yeah, it's, it's making ends meet. It's uh, being able to do the work that you love without compromise. And that's the trick really, you know, I've thought in the past, nothing against uh, landscape artists or anything like that, but you know, you go to these different places and you see all these landscape artists, you know, all these landscapes, especially in Wales, um, and play, you know, rural places like, like Wales, you know, you have it in Cornwall and, you know, Lake District and. Scotland and Ireland and wherever um, and I've asked myself you know should I just have a kind of pseudonym I can do the work I love and I can also um, paint landscapes but then it would take something away from me if I was doing something that I didn't you know and maybe I wouldn't love the bit that I love so much if I compromised it so I've decided to you know still stay within the cultural sector um, and just do other jobs really um, I still get paid for, you know, obviously I sell work and I get, you know, get paid for that. Um, but not enough to pay the bills, if I'm honest. Not enough to pay all the bills, not enough to... And I think it's reassurance as well for me. I think I'd find it a struggle. I know other artists that have been, you know, Welsh artists that I've spoken to galleries about who are really um, popular, sell really well. But then they get stressed if they, you know, if, if they don't sell enough for a particular you know, over a particular six months, then they get stressed over it. So, you know, I, the, the idea of having another job means it's regular. I don't have to worry about how many paintings I sell. I can, the only reason I have to worry to some extent is keeping the galleries happy, you know, obviously. Um, they need to make a living. And so there's a certain balance you have to have. Um, but I think the balance I get, I'm quite happy with, you know, I do make the work I, I that I want to do. Um, I don't compromise it, um, and I've got a regular source of income. But ideally, yeah, ideally, I think I would just do the work I love. I think I would still do a little bit of, you know, other work because, you know, it's quite lonely being an artist, you know, when you're painting by yourself, you know. And so I think getting out once or twice a week and, you know, you know, meeting people, just whatever you do in a normal, you know, normal job with you have other, other colleagues. I think I would still do that, but I think the balance would be a bit different. I'd probably be working one, maybe two days a week rather than five. Okay. What advice would I give my younger self? Um, it depends how younger, really. Um, I think if I was looking at my younger self who was in school, I would tell them to work harder at school and to get all that stuff under your belt as soon as possible. Um, I don't know if I mentioned earlier, but I left school at 16. I wasn't interested in um, school. I wanted to get out of there. I want, you know, I wanted to be in a band. I wanted to, um, I didn't want to go to college. I didn't want to, you know, that wasn't. So I would say, I would I would try to emphasize how important that is. And that's what I have with, with my children, really. Um, try to emphasize how important it is to get that under your belt and you can get on that trajectory as soon as possible. Um you know, there have been times in my life where I've kind of thought, oh, maybe I should have done something that, that pays more, maybe money would be in, but I don't, you know, that's not, as long as I can pay bills, as long as I don't have to worry too much, um, I'm quite happy, I'm quite happy with the position I'm in, really. Um, I've got my own home, I've got my, my children, I can still do my work. Um, I'm quite comfortable, really, I guess, you know, you know, especially when we look globally, um, and how people in other parts of the world live. I've got nothing to complain about. Um, that's it. Have I ever tried any unconventional mediums? 
Um, not really, not since I've left, you know, since I left college. I, you know, I did, um, I did work a lot with uh, conceptual art and I was, you know, installations and, um, you know, objects, very Duchamp kind of uh, influence, which I think is what, you know, art colleges tend to direct people at generally. Um, but, you know, I'd, I'd been through that. I did that for a year or so and I came out the other side really and I came out the other side realising that painting was what I, I'd grown up loving, you know. I said about education earlier, my, my school books were covered with, with, you know, drawings and cartoons and stuff. And, you know, um, you know, as, as, a, as a child, I loved uh, superhero comics, that kind of thing. So I was always interested in the drama of it. And I think that comes through to my work now, you know, the kind of the lighting is almost stage lit um, and a little bit kind of bigger than life in a different way, not in the, you know, not in the comic way, but in a different kind of way, in my own kind of way. In other thing, you know, influ- those other influences we talked about earlier. Um, yeah, so, yeah, I have tried, you know, conceptual art, but, yeah, it wasn't for me. Do I listen to music or any other background noise? Um, yes, I do. I prefer that to silence. I can't work in silence, but I do prefer something in the background. It's usually music that I listen to. Occasionally it'd be the radio um, when I was in my old studio in, in the other house, my music player wouldn't work, and so I was listening to the radio a lot. Um, and it's just the connection to the world, I suppose. And I think um, when we were talking about influences earlier, you know, I think probably as as much as, you know, I'm interested in the visual side of it, all those artists I mentioned. But then when I talk about motivation, I think probably musicians probably um, influence me more than anyone else. You know, um, I probably think more about, you know, Joe Strummer or Tom Waits than I do about any of those artists that I that I mentioned when I'm, I'm making the work for them. Maybe that the visual side of it is a bit more unconscious, but it's about making the work. And those other influences are about what informs the work. And I suppose that's the difference. But yeah, I listen to music. I do tend to. What's the best reaction... Yeah, I'll try and miss it. I can miss it then. What's the best reaction someone has had to your work? Um, I, d- yeah, I mean, whenever someone comes up and says, you know, that they've um, connected in some way, it's it's a lovely experience. You know, I'd mentioned earlier that an artist's life is kind of lonely in a sense. You're in the studio, you're making the work, you know, um, you only get to see the general public then for for an opening. Obviously, we've got connection with the rest of the world, haven't we? But not when we, you know, as as a as a as a job kind of thing, it's quite quite lonely. Um, and so, yeah, when someone comes up and says, you know, this is connected, you know, and I uh, and I understand it and it makes sense to me. Um, and someone says, you know, I've I've had people coming, you know, or I, you know, I bought this for my, you know, my partner or whatever, and they, you know, because they fell in love with it, and I just had to come back and just that idea of them kind of going and coming back and making the effort or even just spending the money you know i mean the work works out as relatively expensive well, you know we've have, have this argument don't we about um or this discussion about how expensive work can appear to some people and um, when you're used to kind of mass produced things but then when you look at how many hours an artist would put in and how much effort goes into its pennies really but still you know if someone's paying like two or three thousand pound for one of my paintings you know i've got to say well you know okay i, I put the work in and I, I think it's worth that um but it's still a lot of money if you you know you've got to find it so you know so it's um so that's nice to know that someone's willing to um and in, in, in invariably when i've spoken to people you know they haven't been great big chief execs of massive corporations that are buying my work they are genuine you know people that, you know, they might be man- manager level, but they're not, you know, earning ridiculous amounts of money. So it's important to them, you know, to the, that what what they pay him for is um, has value and has meaning. And I think that's the reaction that I like, really, that it's not just they buy in it for, you know, wallpaper sort of thing, expensive wallpaper or stuff, so stick something up there to make something look bright and cheery on my wall. Um, the kind of work I do isn't about that, and I, you know. Um, it's it is about meaning, instigating meaning, and I'm happy for there to be a certain amount of flexibility and 
what it means to them. And I'm glad that, and whenever I do talk to people, that does reassure me that they are in the general direction of what I was thinking, what I was feeling at the time. Um, and so that's the best, you know, that's the best thing that, that, that I get really, the idea that I'm producing this work. And sometimes you're wondering whether it's a bit too difficult to penetrate and whether people really understand it or not, or whether a viewer that hasn't met me will really understand it or not. And very often they do, or at least the ones that talk to me do. And I just find that so, um, I just find it so moving, really, the idea that, yeah, I've connected with someone on a level that isn't, you know, I haven't been dog. You know, I've tried not to be dogmatic in this. It's about this, this and that. Um, I've tried to be a bit more obscure and to allow meaning to kind of be teased out rather than being presented with, you know, a, a, a set of, you know, a list of things. Um, and so, yeah, so just knowing, just when someone comes out and, and says, you know, oh, this means this to me. And it's like, yeah, that's what it's about, you know, more or less. Um, I think that's amazing. And, you know, I say more or less, so I think it's important if it, if it actually resonates with them, that it becomes personal to them as well. So, you know, that it, it, it is kind of about what I was doing, but it's become personal to them as well. You know, that's that's the, the best thing in the world, isn't it? I think as an artist of any of any type, I think, to, to feel you've kind of resonated with someone. OK, what what do you hope that people take away from your work? Well, I think just looking at that now, I think I just answered that with the last question. So I won't really say that anymore, really. But I think it's just it is just. I hope they I hope it I hope the work resonates with with some people if it resonates with one then that, that's an amazing connection to make and um yeah so I, again yeah i'm not going to go on about that again because i've already said okay so if you thank you for the for the, for the thank you um and thank you as well you know for um uh for asking me to do this it's an interesting thing it's not you know it's great to have any kind of coverage we don't get that much really do we visual artists i don't think um so it's great to know that someone's doing what you're doing. So thank you for that. Um, things coming up. I haven't got any solo exhibi exhibitions this year. Um, I've got an exhibition uh, coming up in Turner House Gallery in um, in Panath, which is in South Wales, just outside Cardiff, um, looking at Wales's relationship with Europe. So they're a handful of artists. Um, I think I've got about six or seven paintings in that. Um, again, you know, there's a Welsh group exhibition and part of a, a wider group, um, an artist society. Um, and yeah, we've got an exhibition coming up at the beginning of next year. Um, uh, but anyway, all that stuff will be on my website. So if anyone wants to find anything out, have a look at um, gus.pain.com. So G-U-S-P-A-Y-N-E.com.